Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Everybody, Genki, Tajob? Okay. Surviving the, the monsoons of April? No? Okay. So, open your Bibles to the book of Psalms. Today we are in Psalms, Psalm 116. And while you're turning there, uh, just a quick uh, update on our dear sister Miwa Matsushita. Uh, she suffered a scooter accident uh, two weeks ago, Friday. And yesterday she had her operation, I think on her shoulder, and she sent an email out to our church and said uh, the operation was uh, successful. She is recovering and doing fine, uh, but let's continue to remember her and pray for her health and recovery. So we're in Psalm 116 and we'll read from verse 1 through 9. Of course it's in your bulletin, it's on the screen. But I would like to encourage you, of course, to always have your own app or your own uh, Bible open, uh, just in case. <laughs> so, uh, let's read together verses 1 through 9 in the New International Version here. Let's read. I love the Lord, for He heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because He turned His ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, He saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The very words of God. Amen? All right. We'll start with a uh, little story. And for those who have been uh, listening to me preach for over 10 years now, this is likely your, th your fifth or sixth time to hear it. Forgive me. I don't have many stories, so I'll just use what, <laughs> what I have. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that, Grace. Uh, I was 16 years old. And I had gone camping with my family. We rented a, a camping trailer. And uh, in the afternoon, we all took a nap in the trailer. And in the middle of our nap, I, I woke up. I was finished sleeping. But the rest of my family was still sleeping. So I thought, well, you know, I'm alone, uh, it's afternoon, 16 years old, Let's, I'll just go for a walk. I'll be a, uh, a, a, an outdoorsman and I'll go for a hike and I'll bring my Bible. And so I get my, got my backpack, I put my Bible in there, I got some crackers and uh, a bottle of juice and I went out. And I looked at the map of the campground on the map, there was a trail that makes a, a big loop. So you leave the campground on one side, and you, you, know, you go hiking around the trail, and you re-enter the camp on the other side, okay? So I said, all right, that's great. So I go out by myself, 16 years old, crackers, juice, Bible, into the woods. Let's go. I go, and it's wonderful, it's nice. I get to a river. 
Uh, I sit down by the river, I have a snack, I read my Bible, I pray, I, you know, I put everything back and I start walking. Let's go back. And uh, suddenly, not suddenly, eventually the trail became narrow and narrower. And I, oh, that's nice, this is a good, real wilderness trail. And then the trail became narrower and narrower. And I, wow, I'm really hiking. And I said, where's the trail? And uh, because it seemed to stop, and I thought, maybe I, did I, and I looked around, I thought, oh, maybe that's the trail over there. So I, I you know, climb over some bushes, get through the rough, and, no, it's not the trail. All right, maybe the trail, oh, maybe that's the trail over there. So I, you know, get through there, and I, I look, and no, not the trail, just the clearing. All right, so. Okay, maybe I'm lost in the woods, alone, 16 years old. I'll be okay, I'll be okay. I'm going to find a way. And I keep going, I keep going. 20 minutes, 25, 30 minutes. I'm sweating. I've got leaves and, you know, bugs are all over the place. I'm tired. I have no more crackers. I have little juice left. I'm lost in the woods of Southern California. I'm going to die there. That's what I thought. That was going through my head. And I thought, okay, what I'll do is I'll go down to the river where I was, you know, uh, having my, my snack. And I went to the river. I went down to the river. And maybe I'll follow the river up. And maybe I'll find something. So on my way down, Suddenly, on the left side of me, I still remember, I was 16 years old. This is over 20 years ago. There's a big bush uh, just up the slope, and I hear a noise, okay? Just the, the bush is shaking. I said, oh, Lord, I'm going to die today. Today, I will meet the Lord face to face. And I said, oh, man. And I stop, my, my neck is, you know, the hair is standing up, and I'm, now I'm really sweating. And I'm like, help. <laughs> you know, just all I can muster, help. And then just little by little, I'm shouting, help, somebody help me. Nothing. No answer. Help. And I, I seriously thought, Man, I've lived 16 years of life on earth. This is no way to die. It's pathetic. Uh, well, as you can see, I lived. I'm here now. Uh, but still, 28 years, no, 22 years later, I, I still remember the feeling of terror, of fear, of death, you know, and... I, that's the only time I literally cried out, shouted, somebody save me. Somebody help me. No one answers. Now, it's one thing for a 16-year-old boy to have this feeling, okay? Some high school kid doesn't even have a driver's license, just out there being stupid and hiking by himself. That's one thing. But for a grown man, adult, to have that feeling where death is about to grab him to the point where all he can do is cry out, that's heavy. And that's the situation we have in Psalm 116. It's an amazing, a, a, a profound, a life-changing emotion. And uh, I, I'm going to preach it, but I don't want to say it's a formula or it's something we have to learn. This is a psalm. It is something you feel and you express. You, you don't just read it devoid of, of the emotions. And so I, I want us to learn how to feel, how God shows us how to feel. And so we, we're going to come to the text with some emotion. 
Before we do that, I, of course, we're going to teach, and we want to explain the text. And as we read here, if you have your Bible open or if you have your app open, you can see that Psalm 116 is not nine verses, okay? Can you see that? It's how many? 19? 19 verses? It goes down. And so essentially, we've only read half of the psalm, okay? And that's very important to, to remember because when you read verses 1 and verse 2, this will help you understand the rest of all of the psalms that you read. The first verse or the first sentence in any psalm is kind of the headline of the psalm. When you open an app, the, the Facebook app and you have your news feed or for some of the older folks, when you open a newspaper, remember those things? Newspapers, and you, you have these things called headlines and basically the first line of the article is the summary of the whole article. And so verses 1 and 2 is, is one sentence and it, it will give you the whole psalm, all 19 verses in those two verses. So Psalm 1 is the first half. Psalm 1 is the happy part. It's the part that says, thank you Jesus for saving me. Thank you, Lord, that you heard my cry for mercy. That's what we read, verses 1 through 9. And, and then, verse 2, it says, Because the Lord heard my cry, I'm going to call on him the rest of my life. That's verses 13 through 19. That's the second half. And so, now follow me. The first part of the psalm is the testimony. Just as we here gather every Sunday, it's a special part of Mitaki. You don't find it in many other churches, if at any at all. You're free to come and tell your testimony what has God done for you. That's the first half. But then the second half of the psalm, 13 to 19, is the vow. It's the promise. This is what God did for me, but oh, it's not finished. Because now this is what I will do to God. I will offer myself to Him wholly, completely, a living sacrifice. My friends, we do not love because we love God first. No, 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 no. What is love? It's that God first loved us and gave His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And out of that, we offer ourselves in love to God. That's the order. That's the divine order. Our love comes from God. And so verses 1 and 2 gives us the whole chapter. But let's get to the heart of our text. We go now to verse 3. And now he's going to give you the situation. And he gives you three very vivid images. He says the cords, the cords of death, the cords, the cords of death. Not string. The rope, hard, and they were wrapped around me. The, another image is, the, the words that he's trying to, to show you is, there's an animal, and he's being hunted by hunters and, and men with spears. And he looks to, to his right side, and there's men with spears ready to stand. He looks to his left and there's dogs ready to attack. And he, he looks all around. There's more hunters and more dogs and more men. And they're all around him. And it's, it's, not, it's not looking good. And it's terror on every side. The cords of death are all around. The, the anguish of the grave, of hell, of Sheol, gripped me. It says it grabbed him. Are you there? Have you been there? Most of us know. We don't, we don't, <laughs> that's not an everyday experience. It should not be an everyday experience. But this man had it. We don't know what it was. We don't know literally what it was. It could be a war experience. It could be something out at sea. It could be just his life and, and something happened, a big accident. We don't know. But the man felt 
like he was standing on the edge and he was looking at death in the face and death had its mouth open ready to swallow him and it he says he felt terror but then also he said there was sorrow I was overcome by distress the word distress is trouble trouble it means a situation a physical situation that you can't get out of it was troubling him literally it was a problem in his material and physical body. and then there was the emotional part of it, the sorrow so it wasn't just anger but it was sorrow it could bring tears and anguish and despair now of course we don't have that in our modern life here in this comfortable city but some of us live in this emotionally there is in our human experience a loneliness a regret A sadness that it's not just like okay it's raining and it's it's you know bad weather. it's it's so bad you can't get out of bed you don't want to meet other people you look in the mirror and you hate what you see you know it's that that's what we live in that's the sorrow and the trouble that we experience Now we need to get there. We need to understand it. We need to be right there right now because that's where the psalmist is, is showing us. Because if we're honest as people, we know he is not alone. He is sharing this with others because others can relate. And I, maybe not all of us here, but I know there's some of you here, you have that testimony, don't you? You've been in the valley of the shadow of death. And you know what it means oh to be alive and yet dead at the same time and I'm not even preaching my experience lived 38 years some of us have lived longer and have gone through so much more but there's the good news verse 4 here then I called on the name of then oh that's a big word my friends then then why not before what was he doing before the then who was he calling before the then are you following me I, did he call his family maybe he called his family they couldn't help him okay I'm gonna call my friends because I have a friend who sticks closer than a bro I'm gonna call my friend couldn't help him been there Got a friend, I, I'm sorry brother, I, I feel for you, I just, uh. can't call family, can't call friends, I'm going to call myself, I'm going to grit it out, I'm going to tough it out, I'm going to pull myself up, I'm going to get going. He even failed himself. There's a point where we look at ourselves and we say, you failed yourself, you don't have to believe in God. You don't even have to acknowledge that God, you, maybe you believe in God, but He is not your Lord. You're your Lord. And you can't even call yourself. You look at your sin, you look at your, your, your you, you're not smart enough, you're not educated enough, you, you thought you were, you thought you were a pretty good person, but then you look and, you, ah, ah, okay. And it says, you read further, I was brought low, right? That's what he says, right? I think it's down in verse 8. Is it first? Oh, okay, yes, right. He was brought low. He, had, he couldn't even rely on himself. Then I called on the name of the Lord. I called on the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. And up here on the screen, it's capital L-O-R-D, right? And then on our bulletin, it's the lowercase. This is the correct one. Okay. 
the capital. This is Yahweh, the name of Yahweh, the covenant God of Israel. Not Baal, not Ashtoreth, not Molech. Those are the gods, the fake gods of the Bible. I, I'm not calling on the God of my education, the God of my family, the God of my child. I'm not calling on their names. I'm not calling on the God of my own self-righteousness, my, my Christianity, my church's name. I'm calling on God because no one else can help me but Him. That's who I'm calling. Calling on the name of the Lord. And what does He say? I'm going to cry out. Oh, so I love it. I love how short it is. Can you see how short it is? Oh, Lord, Lord, save me. Do you know that that's what Lord means? Yahweh, no, excuse me, Yahweh. Jesus. That's the Greek version of the Jewish name, Yeshua. Yeshua, Joshua. The, the Lord saves. I called on Jesus who saves me because that's the meaning of his name. Save me. And it's so short. Some of our prayers, my friends, I'm afraid to say it, they're too long. They're just 20 times longer than they need to be. There's a whole bunch of words stacked on it when all you have to do is get on your knees and say, God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. That's it. And God loves to hear that. God loves to hear that prayer. God, you know the thing about God? Let me, uh, let me change gears here. If, if uh, let's say you met a homeless person near your house. This homeless person, for some reason, he followed you home. And you weren't freaked out by it, but he follows you, and you say, okay, all right, here's some money. And he says, oh, thank you so much. And you go into your house, you, you know, go to bed, you get up the next day, you open the door, the, the homeless man is still there. And he says, can you give me some help? I said, you, I, I gave you money yesterday. I love, thank you so much. It helped me a lot. Do you have any more? All right. Boom. You give him some help. And then you go to work, you come back. Who's at your doorstep? The homeless guy. And he said, oh, I, thank you so much. It fed. Can you give me some? All right, all right. Fine. And you give him some more. Now, how many of you would go even that far the third time? Probably not. Some of you, you're calling the police, right? And you say, just leave me alone. Here, go away. That's not God. God doesn't do that. God doesn't say, why are you here again? No, 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 no. You know what God does? It's so amazing what God does. He says, he doesn't say, you're, you pray too much. He doesn't say that. He doesn't say, Israel... Will you stop coming, bothering me and knocking? He doesn't say, you know what he says? He actually said in Jeremiah, you're not praying enough. You're not coming to me enough. If you could come to me 60 times in one hour, that's still not enough. Pr prayer. Now, I'm not here to teach you to pray. I'm not here to do that. Jesus can do that. Just read Luke chapter 11. Read it this morning. The disciple says, teach me to pray. I tried to do that before. This is step one, two, three, four. It's fine. But what will help you more in your prayer life is not me teaching you how to pray. It's me teaching you how God listens to you pray. Because if you know how God listens to you, you got no problem with prayer. All the more you're going to him. And I want you to know right now, he has his ear perked towards you. You have his attention. You have his heart's affection. In Christ Jesus, he sees you as his very own child. And he will open his arms to you. I'm a limited man. I got four sons. I'm holding my baby in the one. My third son is whining and crying, leaving and, and bugging. Get over here, Kazumasa, and I got to get him in this part of here. You know? And that's all I have space for. Son number one, son number two, they got to figure themselves out. I'm sorry. This is all I got. 
No, 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 not so with our Lord Jesus. Our Lord Jesus has arms wide for everybody. Amen, somebody. And he says, come, come to my bosom. Come to me. And then he says in verse 6, excuse me, verse 7, I'm going to give you rest. So now, in verse 3, 4, we have the situation that he's giving a testimony of. Verse 6, and now verse 7, what happens? He, he looks at himself, he's reflecting. He, he stops standing here and talking on the mic, and he sits down, and now he's reflecting, and he's saying, yes, return to your rest, my soul. He's talking to himself. And he says, yes, there's a place you can go where, where you're tired, you're, you know, you've gone through it, you've gone through the valley of the shadow, you've been through the fire, you barely got burned, you've been through the flood, the waters didn't come. Now, just, whew, here's some still water. And here's some green pasture. And breathe. All right, that's our good shepherd, the Lord Jesus who says, come to me, you who are heavy, weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Learn from me. Take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Where are you? Are you in anguish, sorrow, trouble? Is it time for you to look at your own self and say, yeah, let's go home. Let's rest. I've been wallowing in the pig's mire, trying to eat their husks. You need to come to your senses and go back to your father who has a rest for you. There was, a, I just read this morning, so there's two sisters, and uh, one's name is Martha. She's a friend of Jesus. And Jesus comes to Martha's house, and, um, oh, it's Jesus, he's here. Okay, let's get the food ready, let's get the worship ready, we'll get the bulletins ready, we'll get the snacks ready, let's get it ready, we'll get the, you know, the communion ready, and Martha's doing all, and Martha has a sister, her name is Mary, and Mary is the opposite of Martha. Mary, when Jesus sits down, Jesus is just teaching, he's telling the stories and giving the, you know, the word. Mary, not one bit of work. Mary, just sitting right there at Jesus' feet, just, just oh, that's great. Just, maybe he's taking some notes, you know, and, you know, checking out the app, and he's, oh, yeah, that's right, that's what he said. And, oh, just love it, just, just love it. And then Martha, it says, Mar right there in the text, I, the first time I noticed it, Martha was distracted, it said. Dist Some of you, you, can, you can't even listen to me for two minutes without hmm, distraction. She's distracted, got so many. And then Martha, you know, so Martha, running around, running around. And then Jesus, what does he do? Sit down, Martha. Wait, 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 Martha. No, he, Jesus lets Martha just run herself ragged. Martha just run, and Jesus doesn't say a thing. Do your thing, Martha. It, then Martha finally comes to her senses, gets so angry, not at Mary. You know who get, she gets angry at? She gets mad at Jesus. Did you, right? And she says, Lord, can you look at Mary, and can you tell her to get up off her, mm -mm, and, you know, do something? You, you get so frustrated, you're trying to do everything you can, you think you're doing everything right, and you don't get mad at the, uh, you get mad at God, and you point your finger up. And then Jesus, the classic answer, Mary, and he even uses the words in our psalm. He says, Mary, you're, you're troubled, you have, you have, excuse me, you're, you have many troubles, you're, an no, excuse me. you're anxious and you're troubled. Anxious and troubled for many things. Right? You're anxious and you're troubled for many things. But Mary, excuse me, but there's only one thing you need. You've, on this side, you've got all the things here. 
that are weighing you down. But on this side, there's only one thing you need, Mary. I get, I'm, I'm telling you, I get, mm, so many things are going through my head. I can't sleep, you know? And it's weird. I don't know if you have this. This is what I do. I, I'm sitting there and I'm in bed. I'm thinking of how I, I messed up with Naomi, my wife. I, I, I messed up with my sons. And I, I see this like, okay, bear with me, okay? I see like this big grain of rice. I don't know why it's a big grain of rice. It's just this big thing. And the more I think about I'm a failure at my teaching job, I can't coach basketball, you know, I got a sermon to prepare for, and I, it, this big rice grain just gets bigger and bigger. I don't know if you ever had that. I'm sitting there in bed and I just see this big rice <laughs> it getting bigger and heavier and oh, it's weighing me down. I don't know what it is. For, for me, it's my big rice grain. Okay? And I'm just, oh, I can't breathe. Oh, man. But, but there's only one thing you need, Chris. And Mary has chosen that. Return to your rest, my soul. Because God has been good to you. God has been good to you. He took you up out of the muck and the mire. He set your feet on the rock. He put a song in your mouth. God has been good to you. I need to close this. I need to, we, get, we need to get to communion. But I want you to reflect. So the half of us here need to understand this is about Jesus. The cords of death maybe have, have not wrapped around you, but keep on living. You will get to the point where you will be so low and death will come and, and just about, just get to right to your face. If, if not, God will probably allow it. God may allow it. Just to get you to finally say, Lord, save me. And I've, I'm saying this as a love warning. I don't say this just to get you. But out of love for your soul, be careful. Get low. Get low. And understand that in Ephesians chapter 2, Jesus says, no, uh, Paul says, look, we were all dead anyway. We were dead apart from Christ. Dead. But God, Ephesians 2 verse 6, in his great love for us, raised us up because of his grace and his truth. I think it's there in verse, uh, 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 verse 6. So, verse 5. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Grace and truth. John chapter 1. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was full of grace and truth. Gr gracious and righteous. Same thing. Full of compassion. So the half of us, other half, I, I, want to, I want to invite you to your rest once more. I want you to come to the cross where your rest has been won for you. All the work that you ever needed to do, okay, it's been done. And by coming to the table, you say, thank you, Jesus. You've finished the work for me. I'm receiving you, and I'm going to sit at your feet like Mary. I'm going to rest. And I'm going to tell my soul, be returned to your rest, O oh my soul. And I'm going to thank God for being so good. Will you thank God right now? Will you come to him right now? Will you pour out your soul? Will you give to him all those worries and troubles? And will you come to your rest? Shall we pray? Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. Um, Lord, I, I really don't know uh, the anguish and the trouble. Probably I know just a little bit of what people go through. But Lord, uh, you know God. And I thank you that though we cannot cry out vocally, Lord, you hear our groans 
and our, our aches and our pains, spiritually, emotionally, psycholog psychologically, bent, you hear them, God. And I thank you, God, that you are not deaf, but that you hear in high definition. Not only do you hear, you went through it yourself. You put yourself on the cross to do what we needed to do, to suffer what we needed to suffer. Oh, we thank you, God. And Lord, I want to raise my hands and my heart with those here who have a testimony like in Psalm 116, that they love you because you heard their cry. You heard my cry, God, and I thank you for that. And I want to bless you today. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.